A thanks to Fort Triumph, those guys have sponsored this episode. GG to the person in the top comment, you've won a free game this month, and to the other people last week who I replied to, you won games last week, congratulations. And I'll be replying to some more people this week, because it's a better way of doing it, I think, than just announcing it if they find out straight away. It's like a bit more exciting. Yeah, and giveaways are a bit annoying, aren't they? Because there's always some people that can't win. Anyway, I'm waffling. Let's carry on. Bethesda have discounted most of their games to very low prices, their lowest ever, and there are a number of other decent first-person shooters that are reduced as well. And we've got the biggest drops on some other huge titles. Make sure to leave your comments down below. Let me know what you've been playing this week. I've just finished Axion Verge 2. What a game that is. I'll make sure I get my review out for that one. If you enjoy the content, then do consider sticking around. And as always, what's on sale? Well, let's find out. There are lots of games that go on sale over and over and over and over and over and over again. Hollow Knight never goes on sale, it just doesn't. It did way back when it first launched at 50% for like two weeks and since then it hasn't gone on sale at all and I don't think it will and in all honesty I don't think it should. It's £10.99. That in itself is like, what, 30% cheaper than Ori and the Will of the Wisps? But this is as good and personally I think it's better. It's one of the best games I've ever played in my life. There's an incredible amount of content for it. If you like Metroidvanias and you haven't played Hollow Knight for whatever reason, just buy it. To just do the main story, it's going to take about 25 to 30 hours, so it's not huge, but if you want to do the extra content, you're looking at 50 plus easily. So there you go, putting a non-sale game in a sales video. I am sorry, not sorry. Big thanks to Fort Triumph for sponsoring this episode. They've just released their XCOM-like game on Nintendo Switch. Now it describes itself as a fantasy turn-based tactics game, but they've actually included a permadeath feature here as well. You can grab up and use the different items in the stage, such as trees and boulders as weapons, and there are four different factions and four classes available. And it features an excellent musical score from Marco Valerio Antonini, who's an award-winning composer. And he worked on the OST. The heroes you'll control can be leveled up, skilled up, and the traits that you apply to them allow you to then customize their loadout, essentially creating unique classes. It's currently 25% off, that's only £13.49, and that goes on until the 5th of September. Certainly one for strategy fans like myself to consider. And it has a small 1.1 gigabyte download. If you want to check it out, I'll pop links in the description. I've been very impressed with the way Wolfenstein 2 runs on the Switch. I played it back on PC, worked my way through. Brilliant game, absolutely amazing. Has BJ Blazkowicz in it. The shooting's excellent. It's just everything that this developer does so well. And it does that thing where it goes from light-hearted to super serious and kind of brutal, and then back again. My main gripe with this is the amount of storage space it takes. It's like 21 gigs, but it's seen a few patches since launch. It works, it works, it seems to my eye anyway, to be working really nicely now. And this is by far the cheapest it's ever been. If you've not played these, it's not all sh just shooting as well. It's actually broken up. There's like a base area that you can go to and it's a touch more nuanced than something like Doom. Great game though, really enjoy it. And it's got some horrible villains in it. Then you've got the Roller Coaster Tycoon game that Glenn reviewed for us. It's only £9.99, that's 50% off. If you're not familiar with the Roller Coaster Tycoon games, well, just a picture a theme park sandbox. You can build any roller coaster you want. You can choose exactly where everything goes. You can design the, uh, the rides. You can change the theme of your park. You can tweak things like the finances, how much you borrow. It would be worth checking out his full review of it. We enjoyed it. I think it was a bit pricey at launch, but it's seen a few drops. And now at this price, well, yeah, that's well worth it if you're looking for a really good, solid strategy experience. Just be warned, it's a bit of a life eater, this one. At 2.7 gigs, and that sale goes on until September the 5th. And you can hear the sound of the hidden gem bell tingling. <laughs> tingling. Bell doesn't tingle, does it? What am I doing? Tink tinkling? No, that's going to a toilet. I don't know. What noise does a bell make? It's making that sound because Neon Cab is currently only £3.59. That's 80% off. And it's not going to appeal to everyone. Have a listen to what I've got to say and see if it sounds like something you might enjoy. You essentially choose the different passengers you have in your cab. It's got a full overarching story, but you're also trying to balance the needs of those passengers you have. And then they rate you based on how you performed. Uh, 
emotionally speaking. It has a branching narrative which was written by a number of different writers and it's a very chill experience. Not something that I know is going to appeal to everyone, it's very different to your usual and I guess that's why it gets classed as a hidden gem. I've just seen Red Faction Guerrilla Remastered Edition is only £6.74. You are having a laugh. That's a joke. 75% off. Stupid cheap. Brilliant third person action adventure from Kaiko and THQ Nordic. Runs well on Switch. Destructible buildings. Massive over the top weapons. And a giant hammer that you can smash everything to pieces with. What more could you possibly want? We've got a full review of this, like many of these others. Just check that top comment or the description and you can uh, check those out if you want. But this was a massively underrated game when it first came out and I think it's nice that it's had a bit of a second wind on Switch. There is an online here but let's be honest, Switch Online, unless it's like a very big game with a huge following, tends to be pretty dead. On that note you should be playing Plants vs Zombies. Man, what a game. Yeah, there's a full story here though, it's set around Alec Mason and his brother but I don't want to spoil it. The only thing it didn't have, which was a bit of a shame, is it didn't actually use the Geomod technology like the original Red Faction had that moddable terrain you could just dig through the side of a mountain but they don't have that here probably for obvious reasons because there's a bit of scripting that takes place through the story and you could do some notoriously glitchy things with that tech back in the day still a decent game well worth it that sale goes on until august the 17th so the cynic in me sees that uh gta the remastered what is it like san andreas and all that are coming to the switch Potentially, it's a rumour, but it's blatantly going to happen. And suddenly, uh, both the Saints Row games go on sale. Now, what a coincidence that is. There you go. But they are very funny. There's some um, floppy weapons you can get in this game. Uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend playing it around kids. It's uh, <laughs> It's got tons of content, like ridiculous amounts. And it does include all of the DLC as well. So there's two DLC packs as well as 30 DLC items. And there's also online play for one or two players. And it's a whole lot of fun. So yeah, consider that one, it's 65% off, that's £12.24, and that's until August the 17th. Pine is one of those success stories. It launched on Switch in a terrible state. Like, it was embarrassing. And I'm, I think the developers, 12 band bound, won't mind me saying that. Like, it was so bad. The load times took about six minutes. No joke, it took about six minutes to load. You'd walk along, get stuck in scenery. It was just, it was a complete and utter mess. And we covered it and we tore it to pieces really with a performance review and then I had a message from them saying look we're working on more patches we're gonna get it fixed up and it took maybe six months and about three or four patches until it finally reached a state where it was decent and I covered it in the most recent patched up video and it was okay look it's, it's never gonna be completely flawless but it's so much better than it was and it's such a nice concept you've got this large open world with a interconnected story but there's tribes in this open world that exist outside of what you do. So they'll have their own rivalries and they'll be battling each other and you can give gifts to them so that you get onto their side and then that will help you in the storyline. There's loads of crafting, there's all sorts to do and it's a decent length at about 20 or 30 hours. It really is an interesting one this and it's certainly worth considering now. It's 60% off at the moment in the American regions and that goes on until August the 19th. It has a download size of 2.3 gigs. Next up then we've got Axiom Verge 2 which has just launched. Now this comes from developer Thomas Happ. You'll have heard of the first game and it's currently got a 10% discount until I believe it's the 19th. Axiom Verge 1 is, is really regarded as a bit of a masterpiece and I've just rolled credits on this and it's well worth it. I know it's not the cheapest on the list but if you're a Metroidvania fan in my opinion it's almost essential. It's got a really strange feel into it. You know that scene in Blade Runner where they're at the market and the, and the music that's played there almost has that influence from, I don't know what you'd call it, if you call it like Middle Eastern or, or different... Um, like Indonesian culture, it has that feel about it. And a lot of the, the arms, as they're called in the game, which are the powers essentially, but they're based on, on individual people. I know this sounds really confusing, but they have or they share names that very much feel like they're from those cultures. It does everything right, in my opinion, in terms of a Metroidvania. It's not too long, it doesn't outstay its welcome. And yeah, I, I've, I've been thoroughly enjoying it. I'm very happy I picked it up. It's only 430 megs. It's got all kinds of time travel and time bending mechanics in there. It, there are, it does have its flaws for sure and I will do a full review of it but I'd still say it's well worth it. That goes on until August the 19th.
The kids pick of a week, I've got to say, I actually finished this one before my daughter and it's Albert A Wildlife Adventure. This is a lovely game, absolutely lovely. In a similar vein to I guess something like Pokemon Snap, you get your camera, you get let loose doing lots of different tasks and missions, but there is an overarching story as well where this big conglomerate are trying to take over the island basically by building like hotels and stuff on it and then you as the hero have to prove that the land there is actually, it needs to be conserved because it has really rare species on it. So that's why you've got to go out taking your pictures and stuff. And, it, and it's just a lovely game. It's not the most complex. It's a little bit re repetitive in some areas, but for kids and for big kids like myself, it's just delightful. It just puts a big smile on your face as you're skipping along with the sun shining. Um, it's only 391 megs. It's reduced by 20%, taking it down to $15.99. And that's until August the 23rd. All right, next up then, I'm going to show my age here. And this next one reminded me of one of my favorite games as a kid called The New Zealand Story. Some of you might instantly go, oh, The New Zealand Story. And the rest of you will be like, that sounds old and lame. But it was a classic and it's called Songbird Symphony, this game. It's different really in its mechanics, but something about it just reminded me of that. I'm not really sure what it is. This one's very cool. It's a bit like a Metroidvania, but in the fact that you have to learn and perform songs. And once you've got those songs, then you can move to the next area. It's got a big storyline. It's very colorful. It won't take you too long to finish. You're looking at about six or seven hours. So perfect sale pickup territory, really. It's got a great soundtrack. I will say that some of the difficulty, like there are, there are difficulty spikes here in some of the songs but it didn't completely detract from my experience. I still thought it was great, in all honesty. I just, it's just a lot of fun. It's 1.4 gigabytes, as I say, and that goes on until August the 27th. It's 55% off. I'm gonna throw in one bonus game. I'm throwing this one right in there. I think I gave this like, might have been either a high 80s or 90%, something really high up, and it generally has hugely high reviews, but it looks so um, like this that a lot of people pass it by. And this is for that one guy who's watching this or girl and they're thinking, I need to have a laugh. I like, I need to, I just need to have a chuckle. I feel rubbish. Get West of Lovin. Come back in about 10 hours time with a huge grin on your face, having just laughed yourself silly for the last 10 hours. It's absolutely hilarious, ridiculous, very, very funny, and still a very decent game underneath it. Has stupid turn-based combat. It's got a nice story. There are 50 different hats to collect. And it's just full of jokes that are sometimes hilarious sometimes terrible but just yeah it's gonna make you feel very good this game so for that person that needs to feel good this is the i want to feel good pick west of lovin it's 44 percent off and that's until august the 31st and now we need to look at two games you should avoid because they're not going to make you feel good they're going to make you feel like you've just wasted all your money first up then and quite poetically we have the polar opposite of hollow knight gleamlight gleamlight launched with a glass based theme a complete ripoff of hollow knight except it didn't do anything that that game did well the combat's janky the animation's poor and it doesn't even tell you when you get like power ups and it's just a badly designed ripoff game and it's a shame as well because the developers have clearly got some talent in terms of art like that doesn't look awful does it but you look at the animation and things like that they would have been much better off just you know, honing it in, doing their own thing, because they've obviously got the talent to do it. But this, it's a game that just wound me up from start to finish. And not just because it tried to copy, look, loads of games try and copy, but at least do it well. No, terrible, terrible game. The next one is less of a full on avoid and more of a be cautious and maybe watch a review. And it's the stillness of the wind. I bought this the instant it was released. For me, that looks like the perfect game, right? Like you're super chill, you've got a tent to your homestead, you've got a like barter for supplies. It just didn't click with me. I'm not really sure what it was. It, it, it just didn't click with me at all. And again, I don't know. I don't want to say this is an avoid. I want to say this is a someone in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this one. What was it about this one that maybe you liked or, or what was it that kind of goes along with it not clicking? Because it didn't feel like the, the gameplay mechanics came together and it didn't know these games don't have to have super amounts of complex gameplay, but they have to have something that ties it all together. And I just maybe I didn't find it or it just wasn't there. So yeah, let me know. All right, thanks to all of you for watching. Big thanks to the channel sponsor on this one. It's amazing that people want to sponsor us. We still can't really get our heads around it. Leave your comments. Oh, congratulations to the person who's won the free game this month. I'll pop your name in the top pinned comment. Leave those comments. I'll reply to a few people with codes. We'll make it simple so that you know if you've won more quickly. And uh, a thanks to our patrons. We've had a couple of new ones. Your names will be in the credits today. I'll redo the credits so that they're all there. Thank you so much. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!